Yo, 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 yo. Hey, what's up, everyone? Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Today on Know Your Stuff, we are going live. And we're going to talk about vintage spray paint, something that some of you might not even know about. Um, I've been uh, collecting some of this stuff for many years, and it's a, it's a really crazy niche, so we're going to get right into it. Got to make sure that my audio and my visuals are going well and that we are actually live. And it looks like we are live, so we are good with that. I hope everyone is having an amazing Monday. Monday, Monday, it means shipping. It means all of that stuff. So we are going to talk about Krylon specifically. We're also going to dive in a little bit about Rust-Oleum. Their spray paint, this stuff is commonly found at garage sales and estate sales. So that's what I really want to touch upon today. So let's get right into it. For those that don't know, Krylon started in, it says right here, 1947 by Howard Kester. And he was trying to go after DuPont, DuPont's kind of business with uh, creating, creating a spray paint that mixed the colors and everything. So, you know, pretty much Krylon is the father or uh, Kester is the father of spray paint. So you might say, well, what does that mean for resellers? Well, so we did this in 1947. And in the 50s, it was really popular. And during this whole time, you know, people just use spray paint and stuff like that. The vintage spray paint is worth a pretty good amount of money. And that's what I really want to hit home with you guys today is... Vintage spray paint is something that you look should look for because it's out there. And I think it's something that maybe some of you don't even realize that some of these cans are literally worth hundreds of dollars. So we're going to get into that in a second here. Got to make sure this is going good. We got some people in the chat. How you guys doing? We got Linda's Rocky Mountain Finds. We got the Shred Guy. He says Krylon Paint. What? Yes, Krylon Paint, vintage Krylon Paint. We're going to get into that. Flipper Joe is in the house. And uh, the Shred Guy says, doesn't it go bad? We're going to talk about all that kind of stuff right now, what to look for, and we're going to get right into it. Like I said, you know, vintage spray paint has been out since uh, the early 50s. Rust-Oleum did spray paint. And why, you ask yourself, why is spray paint highly collectible now? It has a lot to do with graffiti and subcultures hip-hop cultures and stuff like that definitely in graffiti that's how i got into collecting uh spray paint and it's out there it's at the garage sales and estate sales you're gonna find this vintage stuff mostly at estate sales because if you've ever been to a state sale you know how they have like the garages and all the like the cleaners in one place and the soap in another place the krylon and all the kind of different spray paint is going to be usually in the garage section Sometimes they'll have it in the front. They'll have it with the tools. But I want to show you guys today what to look out for because there is an amazing amount of money. We got Liz Kellogg in the house. She says, greetings from Omaha. Hello. Welcome. Hoping you have a great Monday. So, yeah, uh, Krylon's paint. So, like, the founder found Krylon in 1947. He was trying to go after DuPont's business, who has been in the paint business for years. And Krylon developed a successful spray that you can pick that uh, a spray paint which what it was was it was mixing colors and that's where you hear the rattling it's actually a little marble inside there so there's two different elements so when you shake it it, it combines it and actually activates when you spray it so you're saying well what does this have to do with reselling well i'll tell you guys what some of the very first cans that were made are worth hundreds of dollars i think i've seen some of them go for thousands of dollars and I'm in the wrong screen here, of course. Let's see here. So let's look up vintage Krylon. As you can see, this one went for $133, and it's a jungle green. This one actually says from 2011. Um, what you guys really want to look out for is this old Krylon five-color wheel. Um, not all of these are going to be worth a lot of money, but a lot of the funky colors. There's a purple one, and I think the purple one might have been Rust-Oleum. And I don't see the purple one. There's a purple one that goes for a lot of money. It's called, it has a really weird uh, color. But what you want to know is like the blacks and the whites aren't going to go for a lot. But if you can find the vintage stuff, like here's a 50s can. 
and these are these are really super hard to find is it in these older cans that look like this they say Krylon but a lot of the stuff that you guys are going to come across are going to be in this can well actually that's not true the, the things you're going to find is the newer the newer the newer cans which is not I don't think I don't know if I can go down that far the newer cans let's see they changed the whole Krylon look it doesn't have the the little marbles on the cover anymore the little the little color wheel but anyways do your research on some of these if you can find these for a dollar pick them up make sure they're not rusted out they don't and the, and the thing is someone was asking in chat I think uh, you don't have to necessarily look for ones that are able to spray because for the most part some of the older ones they're gonna lose their their ability to spray you know it's also a chemical you want to be careful if you see some that are like completely rusted out and really nasty those probably you're not going to want to pick them up unless they're the older 50 versions that are little small uh things that you see so another thing is too so condition is everything with these things so the the, the older it is and the, obviously the better condition they're going to go for a lot of money as you can see they don't have any of the really old ones here in good condition but those go for hundreds of dollars and like i said you can find this stuff at garage sales and especially estate sales so look out for these krylon bottles and do your research on them because some of these krylon with this logo don't go for a crazy amount of money but if you can pick out a whole box of them for a dollar definitely look out that for that and we're actually going to see some of these are actually some of the older ones this isn't Krylon, but there's old vintage spray paint. I know some of the gold ones, pe people love the graffiti stuff. So if you can find these in by the case. See, this is what the newer, this says vintage, but this is kind of what the newer stuff looks like. It's in like kind of like this, uh, this regular kind of packaging. The things you want to look out for for sure are these f the five color wheel ones. And so also I want to I wanna touch on this because this is very um, interesting is that you can't ship spray paint through usps because it's a chemical i forget what it's called there's like certain laws that you cannot send solvent based products through the mail but you can send them through ups and fedex so if you guys are going to be dealing in this definitely you know you you want to wrap them in some kind of bag ziploc bag something that's uh that it's not going to explode and get everywhere I've never heard of these exploding in the mail, but I'm sure it's happened. So just remember, you cannot ship these through standard postal service because they are considered a toxic chemical and a flammable liquid. Yeah, Shred Guy is saying hazmat, definitely for sure. You can ship this kind of stuff with UPS and FedEx, but I don't know exactly if you need a special form or anything like that. Maybe someone can help me in the chat. I haven't sold one of these in a while. But I just wanted to make this video to kind of show you guys, like, look, you know, Krylon stuff is out there. You're going to find this kind of stuff at estate sales all the time. And I cannot stress, like, this is one of those weird little things that you might have passed up a million times while you were out there and about. So also, um, let's, get, let's dive a little bit deeper. So yeah, Krylon started, you know, in the early 50s, as you saw the little bottles. And for those that are just tuning in, we'll go back to that. This is what a 50s rustoleum spray paint bottle looks like if you can find these in mint condition they will literally go for hundreds of dollars now also i want to show you guys there's a purple now that's rustoleum there is a purple krylon that is like the holy grail of krylon we'll look at this right here it's this purple one i don't know for what reason that this goes for a crazy amount of money but this purple color icy grape go this one went for 681 dollars now just let 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 that sink in for a second so uh, 681 dollars for an old rusty spray paint bottle so that's why i wanted to really make these videos to let you guys know if you're going to garage sales you're going to estate sales this stuff is in all of that usually especially estate sales you find them in the garage because for the most part for anyone that doesn't know estate sales is usually when um an older person uh dies and their family you know they usually get all the stuff that they want and then all the rest of the stuff they just you know sell it as like a as a huge garage sale 
And uh, a lot of older people have a lot of this old spray paint in their garage. They just bought it in the 60s. They bought it in the 50s. And they just have it in the garage so you can find this stuff. And a lot of people pass this up is one of those things that I've been around for so long doing reselling that I know about these little niches. And that's why I wanted to make this video to let you guys know. Check it out. You're going to find this stuff anywhere. So let's actually go to some questions. And then we're going to dive a little bit deeper. So stay tuned. Um, let's see. Uh, yep. So Linda Rocky Mountain said that I would imagine estate sales and garage sales would be a good place to find this stuff. Yes, especially older people that have this. And uh, the shred guy asked Chris, why do people want them if they don't spray? It's a collector thing. A lot of older graffiti guys that were, you know, graffiti guys in the 80s and the 90s. Well, they're older now and it comes back down to nostalgia. You know, these guys want to collect the cans and there's a whole subgenre of people collecting graffiti and spray paint and all this kind of stuff so Krylon is pretty much like the tops baseball cards of spray paint and we're gonna actually get into something a little bit deeper here because there's two different types of brands that I want you guys to look out for so definitely look out for Krylon as you can see this is an older Krylon can and it says 1924 so that's funny oh that's actually the brand the the color number as you can see from the other ones this one this one label looks older and it has the 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 name and everything on the front and, and the warning on the bottom this is an older can i want to say this might be from the 60s or the 70s and that's why it went for so much if you can find a can like this in mint condition it would go for a couple thousand dollars and also so shred guys asking you know you know again you know why do people don't want to if they don't spray it's a collector thing these people want to collect them um i definitely would look at the condition and like i said spray paint is definitely flammable it's definitely a hazmat chemical you don't want to go sourcing and leave this stuff in your car in a, on a hot summer day so if you're going to source this stuff just make sure you're you're very safe and you keep this in a in a in a cool dark place or in your house um, I'm a I'm a model maker and I've been into models for like 20 years and I can tell you um, I keep all my my spray paint in cabinets and I can't tell you how many times uh, they don't blow up but eventually the bottoms rust out and the paint goes everywhere so just be careful that you're storing these in uh, some place that's you know well ventilated or you know somewhere that's dark that's not going to be exposed to sun and backyard flipper says empty cans yes empty cans if you have if you have any of the see okay. It doesn't matter the contents of the paint, how much paint is in it. It's nothing like that. The factor for these is how clean the label is. The the thing could be rusted, all crazy rusted. If the label is like in mint condition, that's going to go for a good premium. What you really want to find is something in a sealed case and something like that, which is crazy. But anyways, I wanted to show you guys. This is uh, look out for this icy grape. This is like the the holy grail of all Krylon spray paint. So I also want to touch on Rust-Oleum. Some of you who aren't in uh, graffiti culture might have not heard of Krylon. Uh, Krylon has been, you know, a staple in that kind of industry for a long time. You might not even heard of Rust-Oleum, but Rust-Oleum is one of those brands that a lot of people on the East Coast know about. And uh, Rust-Oleum is another brand to look out for. As you can see, I'm going to show you guys this right now. This Rust-Oleum with the, um, I don't know what, what what kind of pattern it is. It's like a, I forget what that pattern is. It's like a Scotch, Scottish pattern. And it says stop rust. Some of these go for a good, a good amount of money also. So look out for those. We're going to actually go dive a little bit deeper into these. Um, as you can see, the older ones also have the numbers on them and the patterns. And uh, also Rust-Oleum comes in different things. Like this is a, this says wet look. These are older JCPenney brand ones. Uh, the main Rust-Oleum stuff that you want to look out for is definitely this, this kind of label and brand is the kind that looks like this. Now, as you can see, these ones on the bottom, these aren't going for a crazy a lot of money. But if you can get these for a dollar or less, it's a good side kind of hustle and you never know you might come across one of these higher end ones uh, this one's a chestnut brown i noticed that like the the crazier the color as far as like the the, the oddest color like that icy grape the the better these do as you can see this has a standard push button 
And also you want to, so, okay, so let's actually back up a little bit because actually this brings up a good thing. And if you guys have any questions in the chat, plaid, thank you, um, plaid color or plaid uh, pattern. If you guys have any questions during any of this, please put them in the chat. But I want to dive deep into this. Okay, so those that don't know, some people might not know, a standard spray paint is going, this is, these are all three things that need to, you need to have. You don't really need to have them, but these are the three things. You got your body, you got your cap, which is the, the plastic lid, which some of those even corrode over time, and the spray, the, the push, the little nozzle right here, the spray cap. And as long as you have all that stuff, you know, those are, those are going to bring the value. For the most part, you know, sometimes you're going to find, a lot of the times you're going to find the tops missing. And that's not a huge deal, but it is, it is a deal breaker on some of them. So just make sure they have, you know, their complete items. And you can even swap out the caps. Just say, you know, if there's missing a cap, you can just put a new one on there and just say that you swapped it out. It's more of like, usually people don't really care too much about the caps as far, or, or I should say the, the sp they call caps, the spray, they call the little plunger thing caps. The little plunger thing, they usually don't care too much about that. But the main thing is definitely the look of the label. And some labels are actually um, printed directly on the can. And some of them are stickers. And a lot of the older ones are kind of like, uh, I want to say they're like almost like screen printed on there. And so uh, definitely look out for that. So yeah, Rust-Oleum. And another thing I want to show you guys since we're kind of diving a little bit into this thing is also back up a little bit here so if you're looking for paint stuff also if you're in your, in your garage if you're in garages look out for like these larger spray guns and my internet is acting all slow there's there's some of these spray guns that actually go for a pretty good amount of money too one brand to look for is a wada as you can see you know there's these things this one went first this is a brand new one but look out for these but do your research on those because a lot of those vary in um prices so definitely do your research don't just buy a, a paint gun thinking it's going to be worth money but a wada is usually this a nest a wada that's a good brand to look out for even even airbrushes uh for those that aren't around or for those that you might find you know air a wada airbrushes especially vintage ones can go for a good amount of money and you can you can find some of those at garage sales but the, uh, lastly what i wanted to go over so when all the spray paint i want you guys to know about that the last thing i want to know to let you guys know is there's signs there's paint signs and uh, i don't think this is going to come up with anything that i wanted to show you guys exactly what was up maybe put put vintage in here There's Rust-Oleum and Krylon. They they made like old vintage paint signs like this. Look out for those kind of tin uh, aluminum signs. This was actually not a good uh, thing. Dutch Boy, look at that, how much that one went for. Look for vintage, like people look for vintage car signs all the time. And you might be passing up paint signs too. This Sherman Williams, and actually this brings up a good thing. This Cover the Earth sign. If you can find some of these in mint condition, they go for an extreme amount of money. And uh, Sherman Williams, and actually, let me do a vintage Sherman Williams. I'm not sure if I've ever dived into, into Sherman Williams paint. I don't even know if they do spray paint. I know they do like house paint and everything. So we're gonna actually do a live know your stuff about Sherman Williams real quick. And we're gonna dive and we're gonna go highest price to see if what kind of craziness they got here. So yeah, they got the cover the earth stuff and the DuPont signs. There's a huge one. This one, whoever bought this, oh, there's a bunch of them available. I don't know if this is a newer one, but this is in mint condition. If you had the money, this would actually probably be a good little investment here. Well, anyways, I wanted to let you guys know also there's vintage paint signs that you got to look out for for sure. And uh, Silver Hair Stacker saying he's uh, he can't imagine how many of these he's thrown away. Yeah, people, that's why I'm making these videos for you guys because there's a lot of this stuff that is gold. And I've been doing this for a long time where like I can go to a state sale and someone uh, might not see 
you know, oh, there's no jewelry, there's no video games here. But for me, I'm like looking for stuff like this too, because a lot of this stuff is going right through the, or, or just is being left there. So, uh, like I said, so if you guys uh, have any quick questions, leave them in the comments below. The Shred Guy, thank you for stopping by. He says he had to run. Smash the like button. Thank you very much for that. So if you guys have any questions, leave them below. We're going to give it a few minutes for questions. Basically, I wanted to show you guys that there is vintage spray paint out there that is worth good money. Um, and if you're coming to this video late, uh, check out the video later. You can bet they'll see it. So uh, I don't see we have any questions. So hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this show. And if uh, you learned a little bit something new, if you're watching this on the back end, leave a comment below if you have any questions about spray paint. And uh, like I said, you can't ship these through USPS because of hazmat issues. You need to ship these with UPS or FedEx. Look into that before you ship them because you might need a special label or a sticker or something like that. Because I know when I've bought paints, uh, they've had special stickers uh, for the UPS stuff. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Click the bell button if you want to see updates and live videos and stuff like that. I'm Chris. I hope you guys learned something today, and we will see you soon. Thanks again for coming.